Okay, good afternoon everyone. Um, this afternoon's talk is from the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama with Ian and Hilary. Um, Ian is head of uh, stage stage management and things at at the university at the the college. Um, so I'm going to hand you now over to Ian, um, who's going to take you through um, this afternoon's talk. Yeah. Over to you, Ian. Thank you, and hopefully I just hit the share, and this will work. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, if you can just tell me, Richard, if you can see the PowerPoint there, if that's working okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's great. Okay. So, um, so as Richard said, uh, myself and Hilary from the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama um, in Cardiff. Uh, hopefully, you've passed the building and seen uh, see the lovely facilities we have there. Um, but what we want to talk to today is about a career in the entertainment industry. Um, and the fact that it's not all singing and dancing. Um, so we want to talk to you about what goes on backstage. Okay, um, I've broken this down into quite a few areas so you can get an idea of what the potential careers are that you could look into um, as you're going through your current studies. Um, so stage management. Um, I'll, I'll probably drop names quite a bit as I go through this. Um, this is Rachel, who's one of our alumni. She was deputy stage manager on um, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child in the West End in London. Um, so in a very short period after graduating from college, that's one of the jobs that she, she's done. Um, and the, the variety of work that people get is phenomenal. Um, in fact, Rachel actually helped set up the, um, the hospital system in the, in the Wales Millennium Stadium recently. So, um, so yeah, so the role is the stage management and the stage manager will literally be um, the person that, that holds everything together on stage and make sure everything's in the right place at the right time. It's a very big job um, and it's it's highly enjoyable. You get to meet lots and lots of interesting people and famous people and you get to work in the best theatres and, uh, and events around the world. Um, this one is Wicked. This is Anthony Field. He's the he was the company stage manager for Wicked. Um, he's moved on to a few other projects now, but he was uh, with Wicked for over ten years. Um, and then we've got um, this is Warhorse. I think we had the 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 stage manager, the deputy stage manager, two assistant stage managers, and the head of rigging um, were uh, all involved in this uh, UK wide touring production. Um, other jobs backstage, lighting. So this is uh, the Spice Girls. Um, the lighting that you can see there was done by Tim Routledge, who's uh, again, one of our alumni. He's one of our earliest graduates. Um, and apart from the Spice Girls, he's worked with Beyonce and Take That, and he uh, he won an award for lighting Stormzy at uh, Glastonbury uh, last year. Um, so it's a, that's a fun pack job. Um, and this gives you an idea of the backstage, the sort of control systems that we use for that um, and that we train you up fully in the use of these things, which is really good. Uh, one of the newer departments that happens in theatre and entertainment is video. Um, video is, is getting bigger and bigger and bigger in, in within theatre and entertainment. Um, and again, something that we train people in. One of the, one of the people that will we'll train you in video at the Royal Welsh is Andy Pike and he uh, he creates all of the video imagery for uh, Strictly Come Dancing, if you've ever watched that. Um, and here you can see Beyonce again. The lighting here was done by Tim Routledge and the video is also by alumni. Um, and here you see a sound system. So this is this is a sound, a modern day sound mix, mixing desk, a digital sound desk. Um, and again, sound within theatre, the entertainment industry is a massive job. Um, my, my preferred speciality, I must say, um, and it, it's uh, again something that we fully train you for within the college. Um, the other area is uh, set design and construction, so um, not, not to confuse the two because the, the jobs are quite different. Uh, what what the, you're seeing on that image there 
um, is not real. <laughs> um, it's it's real in the fact that it's it's a mid set, but that's it in the on the stage in our boot theatre in in the college in Cardiff, and and everything there works as as a house would. So all of those doors upstairs and everything, they all people can go in and out of those. There's a entrance on the the left hand side there that goes down to a basement, um, and everything functions. And again, as part of the work that goes with it, with this is that the set designer will create, will literally talk to the director at the beginning and design all of this stuff. And in fact, that's what Hillary trained us uh, initially with us in the college. Um, and uh, I mean, you'll see things there that, that you would take for granted, like plates on a table, a bowl of flowers, chairs, side tables and so on. Um, all of that becomes a responsibility of uh, of the assistant stage managers uh, who will beg, borrow, steal, buy everything that, that, that you see on there to make that that happen. Uh, not not so much of the stealing. So. Um, other areas of that like this is this is um, some of you may have seen this for rugby ball in the in the wall of Cardiff Castle. Um, this was something created by a company called Wild Creations. The own, owner of that company, Matt Wild, actually did the stage management program with us at college um, and then he, he where he specialised a lot, a lot of construction and then he went on to, to run this company, which is now he, he creates w wonderful things like this for many of the major films uh, for Universal Studios as well. And you may have seen Dragons and Cafilly Castle and so like that. He, he, his work pops up everywhere. Um, another area is, is uh, automation and rigging. Um, I mean, this is a sorry, it's a bit of a poor photograph that of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang um, on its automation arm. And that's how they create it and make it fly. Um, and part of the automation uh, industry is getting bigger and bigger with it uh, with us now. Um, so I'm developing further programs with automation. Um, and the word rigging, what that means is that basically if anything is hanging out of out of the sky, um, whether it's people flying or whether it's equipment moving across the across the stage, uh, the, there'll be riggers there making sure that all of that is safe and installed properly. And again, we've had many people going on to to working the the rigging industry. Um, sorry, the the other area is film and television, uh, particularly in Cardiff. Um, Cardiff is. Uh, over the years has grown and grown and grown in the television industry and a lot of the industry has moved into Cardiff because of the facilities that we have. Um, here you can see the TARDIS from Doctor Who and this is actually in the foyer of our college. Many of our students have uh, gone on to work on Doctor Who um, and other things such as his dark materials. I believe 28 of the production arts staff were, uh, were alumni for his dark materials which is a recent BBC. Uh, program uh, and there's lots more stuff in the pipeline coming up. So, so what's the life like? Uh, the the thing with working in the arts like this, I know many parents are very concerned about it because mainly because they don't understand it because it seems like it's a bit of a flighty life. Um, and in fact, it it is an actual proper job, um, and it really it, it's more than a proper job because it's a vocation. It's a way of life. Uh, when you go into the arts, you basically sign your life away um, and you will be just living and breathing uh, theatre, entertainment industry, uh, probably for the rest of your life. It's it, it's it is all encompassing and it, it's brilliant. It is an absolute amazing career. It's very rewarding, very fulfilling, although a lot of a lot of the work is, is what's called freelance. Um, pretty much every, all freelancers in theatre will uh, have steady employment. So it's not a matter that they'll be unemployed for a long time. Uh, anybody working backstage, there is always work. Apart from the pandemic, we, yeah, we'll, perhaps I'll talk about that later. Um, so how do you get into the industry? I think that the first word that comes to mind with this um, is experience. Um, now at the moment, at, at your ages, we're, um, what is good experience to go and get is to obviously with the the school drama productions. Um, so if your school has any drama productions, those are really good ways of, of getting an idea of whether you, whether you enjoy it. Um, and part of this is is that we also also find that a, that a lot of people who, who may 
uh, do performing or they've been asked to do performing may not like actually standing on the stage and, and doing that performing. Um, but doing the organisation, running the show, the lighting, the sound, all the rest of it, it means that you're an absolute intrinsic part of the production, um, but you don't have to sing or dance on stage. Um, the, the other way of getting experience is through local amateur dramatics companies. Uh, those, there's many amateur dramatic companies in Cardiff, um, and it's literally a matter of looking them up uh, and giving them a call, sending them an email, email and saying, can I come and, and work with you? And you'll, you know, they'll probably invite you in and you can go and help out with their plays and so on. And it's a great way of getting, getting experience. Um, local theatres, I mean, Cardiff is, a, is, is rich with arts and theatre um, and is probably one of the best cities in the country. It's brilliant for it. Um, so there's lots of local theatre around. Um, and again, just knocking on the door, sending emails, things like that, make a bit of a nuisance of yourself and see if you can get any experience with them. There is, there is sometimes a little bit of a problem because of age. Some theatres can't get insurance for people under, under 18, but uh, don't let that put you off. Have a go, have a try. Um, some some companies do. Um, so that's uh, that's really is a good way. Uh, there's also the way that I started, which is through local bands. Um, so playing in bands, just helping out with bands, doing lighting, doing sound, video, whatever for local bands. That again is is great experience, um, and gives you a gives you a good idea of whether this is the life for you to actually work in the arts and and uh and make it your your full-time career um now there's also short courses um and uh where there are many short courses around but recently we've started at the young people's production arts um and i'm gonna let hillary take over here and tell you a bit about young people's production arts sure thank you Ian. um so, yes the young people's production arts was launched last year and we uh, create opportunities for people aged 11 to 18 to come and get involved with um, learning different skills and uh, opportunities in, in production arts in uh, Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama. So we've been hosting masterclasses um, through the autumn term and spring terms, which are one offs. Um, they cost £15 and you come in and work with a professional in any particular area. So we've hosted uh, stage management masterclasses, uh, lighting, introduction to theatre lighting, introduction to theatre sound. We've done puppet making. We did Halloween makeup and prop making. Uh, we've done um, a range of different uh, masterclass opportunities, working with professionals um, in small groups. So you really get an opportunity to not only, as Ian was saying, try things out and see if it's something that you think that um, you would like to do uh, more of potentially, but also that you get to kind of really see how um, Welsh College works, see the facilities um, that we have and actually work with some of the staff as well. So really great opportunity there. Um, we also are hosting uh, short courses and a summer school. Um, this year, the summer school is going to be a digital one. Uh, which we're in the throes of planning right now and I'll be sure to send some information over to um, Mr Grab and Mr John to, to kind of pass along once we've got that. Um, but in our summer school last year it was over five days um, hosted at the college and we created a medieval banquet which ended in a live event. Um, so the students uh, designed and came up with a concept. We then created a medieval tiled floor and sourced and made all the props. Um, we lit it, we created a soundscape for it. Um, and then uh, once the installation was set up, we invited an audience to come and see it. So um, it's one of the few opportunities um, in summer schools locally that focuses just on the production arts and actually ends up um, with a final outcome instead of just being skills based. So a really great opportunity again um, to, to come in and see what we're all about and to kind of try things out. We don't have an audition process. All that we do is um, ask that people are interested, keen, creative, up for giving it a go. And really whatever specialism you find yourself within or even if you love it all, um, we'll have a, a space for you. Um, so as I said, as we kind of uh, go on through the year and we're coming up with different uh, opportunities for people to be able to continue getting involved, I'll be sure to pass that information on. Cool. Thank you. 
Brilliant, thank you. Um, is my slide gone? So yeah, this is basically just following what you what you've just said. So, um, so um, the the next element of this really is formal training, uh, which most of you are probably in currently. Um, and if you're in year eleven, then you you'll be going up to um, probably one of these A level B techs or or UALs. Um, and these these basically are, are what we're looking at as entry level qualifications to come on to um a degree okay we, we accept them all the one thing i would say is that when i mentioned the experience earlier that goes hand in hand with this so having you know having a good qualification uh having a good skill uh, schooling but having that um ex experience of maybe school drama plays or amateur dramatics or local theaters or bands whatever all of that stands in good stead uh to help get into um a degree course um, and the course that we run here is a vocational degree and, and what a vocational degree means is the fact that, that you actually do the job. We are actually a national conservatoire and, and, and as, as a conservatoire um, that actually means that it is very very hands-on um, so you don't spend uh, a lot of time in classrooms writing essays and so on. Um, we train you for the job specifically. OK, so um, as I said, the course that that I, I'm the head of is the, the BA Honours degree in stage management and technical theatre. Um, and this is a three year degree. Um, and uh, apart from the fact that we have a pandemic at the moment, we, we normally have 100% uh, employment coming off this course. Um, the, the cool thing about this course is that it, it doesn't make you decide what you want to do from the beginning. What I mean by that is that many courses that are out there, they will ask you, do you want to be a stage manager? Do you want to work in sound? Do you want to work in lighting? Um, and we don't do that. We give you a complete all round training and throughout the three years, we'll work with you to find uh, the specialism that suits you and develop you in that pathway. Um, now, what that means is that when you come out, you will specialize in one area, but you're grounded knowledge of all areas of the theatre industry will make you far more valuable as an employee um, and the employers all of the companies out there understand that about Royal Welsh College um, and it, it is it works really really well and hence our massively high employment rate. Um, now for, for some people they, they might um, think that, that it's um, they're not sure what they want to do um, or they, they might be absolutely sure that they, they like to do construction, for example. So, so where you saw the set there, it might be that they've, they've been trying, you know, doing a bit of work sort of carpentry or maybe some metal work and all of that and you know, quite enjoy doing that side of it, but never thought of a career in the arts. Um, but there is indeed a huge uh, demand for people with skills such as that um, in set and construction. Um, so as a result of that, we've now set up a foundation degree in scenic construction. Um, and what a foundation degree means is the fact that it that it's two years. We have got an option to top up to a full degree, um, but what we found is people doing in this sort of subject after two years, they're pretty much ready to go and work into the industry. So we allow you to do that with the foundation degree or you could top up to a BA honours if you wanted to um, to progress further. Um, now, the, this this foundation degree in particular is is brand new. Uh, I've just written it <laughs> uh, and it will start in in August in uh, 2021. And it's been written in conjunction with all of the leading construction companies. Um, so places like, like um, CTS in Cardiff and Bay Productions in Cardiff, um, the National Theatre in London, uh, Wild Creations, who did the rugby ball in the wall. Um, you know, all of these companies have been uh, working with us. Um, so uh, the the actual course is working quite well in the fact that, that you will spend a, a period of time with us in our workshops in the college, training in core skills, and then you'll go and spend large periods of time with these companies uh, working with them. Uh, and the whole structure of the course is based around that, that work placement idea. Um, and we're hoping that's going to take off very successfully. Um, so that that's a really 
uh, brand new degree that, that we've we've just just started. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is the Royal Wells College of Music and Drama. Um, so we're on North Road um, uh, and we're just next to the, the castle. If you carry on down the road there, the castle's just on the end. Um, so these are our, our newest facilities. We, we opened them in 2011 um, and they include our Richard Burton Theatre. So this is 178 Cedar Theatre, uh, which I'm missing at the moment. I haven't seen it for a while. <laughs> um, and it, it's a stunning uh, uh, building. And, and at the top there, you can see the sparkly lights. That's actually a tension wire grid. So you can walk on that and it's 13 metres above the ground. Um, so it's quite cool. But it's all, we've got all state of the art equipment in there. Um, across the college, I spend £130,000 every year on, on brand new state of the art equipment. Um, so we are really, really up to date. And if that's not good enough for you, we've got this. Our Dora Stouska Concert Hall, 450 seaters Concert Hall. Um, if you want it, uh, I'm not sure if it's still on, but up until I think last weekend, the Young Musician of the Year um, were, was, was filmed here by the BBC, uh, which is on BBC Four. Um, and, uh, and that's been a great success. But this is a fully automated facility. Um, it's got motors and winches and pulleys and everything all over the place, all computer controlled uh, to move things about, even seating. So it's it's a very impressive building uh, with an incredible acoustic and also an incredible sound system. Um, and you can see a piano there. That's something called a Steinway piano. Um, the, the, that piano there that you're looking at probably costs just short of £200,000. Um, and every piano in the college is a Steinway. Um, uh, so they're the best pianos you can get. Um, so uh, that, that's our main facilities there. Um, so within the college, within the courses itself, the study of it, it is three years of study. OK, uh, and what you will do as part of that is that you will work on 11 public shows. So so while you're studying there, while you there are some, there are classes, but they're very practical, very hands on classes. But you will work on 11 shows in three years, which is quite which is quite a lot. Um, and you will also within the stage management program and the foundation degree do on placements with, with some of the biggest companies in the UK. So if you wanted to work and go and spend six weeks with the National Theatre in London, you could do if it was Royal Shakespeare Company or uh, the Young Vic, where, wherever you wanted to do, we could we could make that work out. We had students who have gone on placement in Glastonbury, uh, the Olympics, and so on. Um, so that's that works really well. The other key thing to us about what happens is that you are trained by industry professionals. My department has three people working in it. That's myself, my, my a senior lecturer, and a junior lecturer, uh, and we run uh, the whole program but I have a whole host of professionals that come from the industry to teach classes. Uh, so my, myself and my colleagues will write the classes, but then the, the trained professionals will come in and deliver that, that training. And what happens with that is a thing called networking. It means that you will be working and studying with some of the top professionals from around the UK um, and well, the world actually. Um, and as they get to know you when they're out there working and they need people, they'll be thinking about you and they'll bring you out on the job with them. And that's your career underway. It works fantastically well. Um, and we have people like Don Bilkey, who's the head of sound and video at the National Theatre in London. Tim Routledge, as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, Beyonce's lighting designer, Stormzy and so on. Uh, but they actually come because they, they love the fact that they trained at Royal Welsh and they want to give something back is that they'll come and, and teach for us as well and you get to work with them, which is fantastic. Um, so what's it like in here? This is this is um, Liberty Living. This is the the halls of residence where our students go usually in their first year. Now, I know you I know your student based. Um, uh, sorry, your Cardiff based students, um, but well, one thing I would recommend is that uh, part of the student life is to actually move out of your family home and come and join in with with everything that goes on in, in university life and being part of the halls of residence is, is that. This, um, this, this accommodation here is, is typical. 
um, and it's uh, you get your own room with your own ensuite bathroom. You don't share any of that. The only things you share is a, is a kitchen and a, and a large living room. And that's usually about five or six people will will share that apartment, if you like. Um, in the second year, by then, everybody's made friends and they go and rent private houses in and around the Cardiff area, uh, which which again, all of this is connected with us. We, we're, we're in touch with all of the landlords through our student services department, so they can help and assist with any issues that you have um, and make sure that that it's um, a really good and friendly environment for you. Um, now, part of all of this is that I, I think that parents are, are very concerned because universities get a very bad press these days and all the, all the press seems to talk about is the huge debt that everybody will will come out with at the end of it. And I think the context of that is given poorly. Um, the, the state of this is I'll, I'll give you some idea of cost. So that accommodation I just just showed you there is £129 a week and that will include all of your uh, bills, your electricity, gas bills, all of that uh, includes all of your Wi-Fi um, and it, it uh, uh, and satellite TV as well. So your living costs are £129 a week, plus then you need to uh, obviously pay for your own food. Um, but there are loans available for all of that. Um, the fees, now in, in Wales, we're £250 a year cheaper than anywhere else, apart from Scotland. Um, and uh, the so the fees are £9,000 a year. Now you never see this. This, 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 is a, um, this is money that will come from the government and come to us. And then once you've graduated, you know, so you imagine that's three times £9,000 a year, yeah? So it's just per year. So then once you've graduated, yes, that is a debt. However, it's the way that that is paid back is literally after you've started earning £25,000 a year, then you will start paying back a small percentage to that to pay it off. Um, I mean, the, the way that most students look at that is the fact that it's like a, an education tax. Um, and they don't even notice it going out of their pay at the end of the, the end of the month. So, um, so to be honest with you, as far as 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 the the tuition fees go, which is, which is that nine thousand pounds, I wouldn't worry about those at all. The living accommodation and the and your um, you know your actual living costs, then there are grants and loans available from uh, from the Welsh government. But again, what um, what tends to happen here um, is, well, firstly, don't worry about the money um, because apart from, um, you know, you, you've got that outgoing, you can actually earn some extra money while you're studying. So, um, for example, uh, we have many students work uh, in other theatres around the around the Cardiff. Um, some some take jobs in Tesco's and things like that as well, um, you know, but uh, to earn some extra money. Uh, but the one thing is, is that we have students will also work for the college. So we have a, an, um, we're a public building. So what that means is, is that uh, anybody can come in and have a coffee and watch a show. Um, so the shows uh, there need ushers, so you can work and get paid as an usher. Also, uh, which is the better thing, is that you can be paid by our technical operations department outside of uh, college time. Uh, to actually work on the event. So you could work on the lighting system, sound systems and all the rest of it for visiting companies, uh, which is really beneficial. So my advice would be is, is not worry about the money. Um, so do you want to create an in entertainment industry? And I know we have run into problems with, with COVID-19 at the moment. And, uh, and before COVID-19, I, I would say to everybody, um, come and work in theatre, you'll never be unemployed. You will just keep working and working and working. Obviously, we've uh, run into an issue with COVID-19 because all of theatres have shut down and so on. But it's not going to be forever. Um, and I reckon within a year's time, we'll be all up and running again and, and getting back up to it. And there's going to be so many shows and events going on because everybody will want to get back into the theatre. And um, so by the time you come and do your studies, and you finish your studies, 
you'll be able to go straight back straight into the job and there'll be no problem at all. So the entertainment industry needs you. Yeah, I don't, I don't suppose you know what Kitchener is, but look him up. <laughs> so uh, that's my uh, and Hillary's little presentation. So I'm not sure if there's anybody there who wants to ask some questions, but please feel free to do so. Thank you very much. Yes, guys, if you've got any questions, can you put them on to uh, the Q&A? If you go into the top um, right hand corner of your screens, there's uh, an icon which you click on, uh, which will allow you then to have a look at the live event Q&A. If there's anybody that's got any questions, if you can just pop them in there for us um, and then we can see them and answer uh, Ian and Hillary can try and answer them to the best that they can. Um, so does anybody have any questions? If there are any year 11s who watch this on playback or indeed any of the other year 12s, again, if you have any additional questions, um, just email myself if you're year 11 or if you're year 12, myself or Mr Grabham and then we'll get you an answer. Either we can answer it ourselves or if we don't know the answer, which is more than likely, we can um, ask Ian or Hillary what you know what we should be giving back to. But any question you have is not silly. There's no wrong questions you shouldn't be asking. If it's in, in your head and you're not sure, send us an email, put it on the Q&A and we'll get you an answer. So there's no silly questions. I think the, the, the most important thing to remember, guys, is that you need to start preparing now and especially through the opportunity which um, the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama are offering to people with the young um, person's uh, workshops and masterclasses and everything is that you take part in those um, because the more you take part in those the more likely you are to get better at auditions and things so when you do apply you do get to an audition stage you know, you you know what you what the Royal Welsh College is looking for. Uh, I, I think that's a really good point there because the um, just for you to know is is that if you want to apply, then you apply through UCAS, um, and in that the UCAS form you'll do a personal statement, and if you put in there that you've been on the Young People's uh, Production Arts course, then we'll pretty much guarantee you an interview. Um, and then all it is is an interview. It's just a one to one chat. Uh, talk about the things that you've done, what experience that you have, and that's all there is to it. And we get about 130 applications for uh, just over 20 places. Um, so it's a bit of competition there. So go out and get that experience. <laughs> um, thank you. Ian. Yeah. And uh, you know, that, that's an important point to remember everyone. Um, Hopefully we'll do another live event um, so that more of the performing arts students from year 11 and year 12 can join us and then that you know you can take a little time to look over the presentation um, that we because we'll send this out to you all. Um, take your time to look over it and then we'll come back to it before we break up for um, summer this year and do a question and answer session with um, Ian and Hillary if they don't mind. Not at all. Not at all. I'm happy to. Okay, that's great. Well thank you guys for joining us and I look I shall see you in some of the other talks during the rest of the week. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you Ian. Thank you Ray. Bye. Bye. <laughs>